auditioned for Sonic X uh, only after auditioning for another show for the um, the four kids, uh, which I didn't get, which was called Shaman King. And uh, about two weeks later, I guess, they called me to come in and audition for Sonic X, and I did. Uh, I didn't really think it went that well, um, but I got a call back, which I thought went even worse. And then um, I think a week and a half later, they called to say I got the part, which kind of blew my mind. But, you know, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me and for my career, really. Yeah, I have a name. My name is Sonic the Hedgehog. Speaking about the evolution of the character, I believe in... For me, Sonic went from being a little, not nerdy, but definitely a little more cartoonish to um, kind of a fuller, cooler character toward, toward the end of when I was um, Black Knight. Um, and I think it had. A, I think it was a director who told me, "All right, that's good, but let's try it now this way." He's more of a teenager, and he's more cool, and he's he's more laid back. Because I think um, in the beginning, I definitely was uh, a little little maybe nasal, more nasal, you know, more Steve Urkel sound to him. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that happens with every actor who does voiceovers uh, or a specific character over time, you know, it just evolves and it becomes something that's more natural, I think. Well, first of all, she knows I wouldn't risk diving into a pool in the middle of the night just to save a little hedgehog. Really? You know, I auditioned for the role of Chris, who's sort of Sonic's friend in Sonic X, or his only friend, I guess, uh, human friend. And it was the voice that I used for that that they wanted to hear for Sonic. I had started off with something completely different, got the direction to try something that I had been doing for something else, and then when we started doing the show, it I think it just went from more nasally to less nasal to cool and laid back. Look, go easy on me! I'll turn over a new leaf, I swear! Just give me a chance! Well, this is new. Showing remorse, Eggman? If you played nice, I wouldn't have to break all your toys! When I auditioned for Sonic, I didn't listen to... Um, well, for, for Shadow, I, li I didn't listen to any uh, voice references. I remember for the audition for Sonic, though, they played a couple clips, and I'm not sure who it was because I wasn't familiar with his voice at the time. And they said, they played it for me and said, here's what he sounds like now. We don't want you to copy that, but just to know it, should, it can't go too far out of that ballpark because that's, it, it would be a different character then, you know. But yeah, for Shadow, they just, they told me to basically come in and, and do what I what I felt the character would be. I have actually a former roommate that <clears throat> that I kind of based that character off of. Everything he said was very, very intense and everything was, you know, he's a writer, really cool guy, and really, but you know, awesome to listen to. And I just said, oh, that, that has to be a voice, you know? So when they handed me the, the script for Shadow, I, I just said that I've got to, I've got to put elements of, of him into that. You know? Discovering the secret of my past will be nearly impossible. I'll take those odds. Of all the characters I've voiced on Sonic X, um, it's hard to say which one I've enjoyed voicing the most. I think I, I find something to enjoy about all of them. Of course, Sonic had the most screen time, so that was really great to be able to cultivate that character. And, and sort of make him evolve in, in the years that I was recording it. I really like Shadow because it gave my voice a break from all the screaming. <laughs> and uh, Jet is, is one of my favorites too because um, I, I really like playing crazy, you know, the crazier characters because they have so much more um, dimension to them. I, I don't remember playing Professor, Professor Pickle's uh, assistant though. <laughs> I don't, not at all. <laughs> For Night of the Werehog and that whole, I mean, we, we did that at the same time that we recorded the Sonic Unleashed game, obviously. The biggest differences were just how I was voicing Sonic now, and I think I had a more of a more confidence over how, how, how he sounded 
and how it's um, you know how to produce certain uh, ranges because there you know it's definitely the conversational stuff and then there's the the fighting and then there's the you know the reacts and the biggest difference between recording the show and recording a video game is uh, number one you're recording wild um, which means not to picture for a video game they just give you a list of cues you have a director who says try it like this try it like that try it like that um, for the show we're recording right to a picture uh, so we're matching the lip flap and there's not a lot of wiggle room as far as interpretation you know um, especially with length of lines and so forth and I think we had more freedom in the video game to do that. Uh, interestingly enough, I also had what I think was strep throat the entire time I was recording that video game. I suffered. <laughs> I suffered for about two weeks straight recording that because it was there was so much screaming and I my voice was just like every every break we had I was drinking you know hot soup, <laughs> just trying to get through the day you know. But when the when the producers come in from Japan and from you know from California, you have to you have to be ready to record. You know you can't say I'm sick. I I need another week. You know, you just have to go full force. Uh, I have to admit though, I was more of a, of a fan of Mario because um, I had a Nintendo growing up, and my sister had the Sega. So she kind of rubbed it in my face that she had, you know, Sonic was hers and Mario was mine. And, um, but I played it and I loved the game, you know. And of course, who doesn't? It's a classic game, you know. Uh, any video game lover, I think, kind of appreciates a really good game that's kind of stood the test of time. Give me a break! What's up with all this drama? I got a lot of fan mail uh, in the beginning and also a lot of uh, hate mail, I guess you could call it. And... Uh, you know, it, it sort of ranged from, you know, we don't really, I don't really like you on the show, I'm sure you're a great person, to maybe you should die, you know, or what would happen to me after I did die, and it, like, why, why would you have such hate for a person that you don't even know, and it was, it was just a stream of obscenities, you know, and I, I reported one or two people, because it was ridiculous, you know, getting opening up your MySpace account or whatever and just having to read stuff like this. Because I would read everything and I'd always respond. I'd always say, thanks for your opinion. Sorry you feel that way. You know, I don't know if there's anything I can do though. It sounds like being a princess isn't that easy. So I got good fan mail and then I got pan mail. Um, but it was, I really believe it had a lot to do with change. People not wanting to hear something that they're not used to or uh, change from what they what they did like um, but that really happened in the very beginning I didn't get a lot of um, I think after a year or so there wasn't a lot of like hate hate emails anymore it was more support or you know just saying what's up or you know people just letting me know they were there I just didn't understand why people would be so negative and and then it occurred to me that a lot of them are, you know, children or younger, and maybe it's not something so different as I would do at that age. I mean, I wouldn't send anyone hate mail, but, you know, if someone were replaced on a show that I really liked, or I remember, you know, seeing the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and every so often one of the episodes, Michelangelo would have a different voice and be like, oh, God, no, you know, why? But, you know, if that had been the voice all along, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. Cool off, dude. <laughs> He says. three. I don't even remember specifically what he said or did. I know there were a lot of YouTube videos at some point, and there was someone that was basically going on and on, just kind of nonsensically. Um, I don't know if that was him. <laughs> but, you know, as I said, you know, it doesn't... It's something that younger kids, I think, do and don't realize that they're real people that do these jobs, and it's not just a, a faceless, you know, corporation. They're like actors and artists who really try to create something um, out of nothing. You know, I, I there was something, there was someone who was like, I don't know, I had a good laugh about it with some of my friends. Um, there was like one guy who was listening, like it was, he videotaped himself listening to someone talking about how they liked me, they liked my voice or whatever. And he ends it by saying, let me shut you up for there. 
And I would, my friends and I for about two months would always say, let me shut you up for there. <laughs> like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, let me shut you up for there. Nice smile. I do promos as Sonic still for four kids. So obviously they still have that license. Um, I know that the production company wanted to start, um, Sega wanted to start recording in, in California. And that's where all the actors are, with the exception of Mike Pollock. Um, so that, that, I think, has a lot, a lot to do with it, too. Um, but it doesn't keep me up at night. Listen, you know, everyone, I've, I've lost jobs before. I've gotten jobs that people have lost. You know, it's all, it's a give and take, and you have to be really cool about it. Because, you know, it's so much bigger than, listen, Sonic's an icon, and, and the whole franchise is amazing. And just, you really have to keep things in perspective, because if you don't, you could miss out on, on an opportunity, which might be like Sonic was for me. I mean, it really opened up a lot of doors as far as animation and working with really great people and getting to work on all sorts of shows. Um, you know, and if I had walked into that audition feeling like, oh man, I lost a job to so-and-so or whatever, you know, I definitely wouldn't have gotten that job because I already would have already been in that negative, you know, headspace. And I believe in the law of attraction. I think if you're walking around, moping around every day, that's what you're going to attract. You're going to attract negativity. You know, if you can walk out of an audition that you just, <laughs> you know, the worst audition of your life and say, that was actually fantastic. And feel like really grateful that you at least had a chance to audition and that there are more opportunities coming. Listen, man, the, you know, the sky's the limit because you can do anything you want. Even without wings, I can still fly! The one thing about this business and being an actor is you have to realize that there's no competition. And what I mean by that is as soon as you start feeling that you're running a race with everybody else and you are trying to beat out everybody else, it'll just sap your energy and it'll make you the most bitter person in the world because there's so much rejection and there's so much um, opportunity to to become disillusioned and feel like you're not good enough. Of course, I was upset to find out that I wasn't going to be doing any more of the Sonic games because I loved, you know, doing that. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing for another person, you know? I don't know if I've heard Shadow's voice from the new guy, but um, I've heard Roger's Sonic and, you know, it's another evolution of the character. It's a new... You know, just like how I kind of progressed from point A to point B, you need to move on. You need to, you know, sometimes cultivate um, a new audience, you know, because Sonic fans are always, you know, they're, it's, they're always going to be young. You know, I mean, they're the, uh, obviously the older Sonic fans who have been fans forever, but, you know, as more games come out, you've got kids who've never heard of Sonic except for this game. You know, I think they're, they're doing a good job, and Sega obviously knows what they're doing, so they wouldn't have put someone in that role if they thought they were terrible. I strike two on my way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. Already the pudgy ones are starting to panic. Raph loves this stuff. Over the years I've voiced, I wanna say like upwards of 50 characters or so. Um, some, you know, small bit parts or, you know, and some lead, lead roles and shows. Um, I really enjoyed voicing Usopp the pirate in One Piece. That was one of my favorites. Um, I think because I, you know, I really came in from left field to that audition and said, I'm just going to try something that I don't think is going to work, but I want to have fun, you know. And my friend and I um, that weekend had been kind of, <laughs> there was a picture of me underneath a, one of the bridges in Queens and it uh, looked like I was a troll. And so we kept coming up with this voice for him. and We called him Eddie. Eddie the Troll, and then we just, you know, started working with his voice, and, and then when I went in for One Piece, I just decided I'd do this voice, you know, sort of a, a, a combination of a crazy old man and, and, um, and a clown. <laughs> but I, as I say, I like, to, I, like to, I like to voice the crazier characters, because there's just a lot of, a lot of dimension to them. Uh, well, that was weird. How come that girl didn't know you were you, Sonic? No major reason I don't, I'm not credited as Jason Griffith every time, but uh, I'd like to give a little shout out to my mother. So uh, my middle name is Adam. 
She, my father gave me my first name. My mother gave me my middle name. So I'm Adam, and my mother is Carol. So I said I'm Carol's son, Adam. So Adam Carolson for that. Um, the other one is Jay Griff. That's just a nickname that I've had forever. And um, I'm trying to think of any other aliases I've used. DJ Tanner, because I was in love with Full House and Candace Cameron. So <laughs> my little shout out to her. <laughs> but it's it's, you know, aliases are fun. You know, you don't always have to use your name. You can, you know, and, and then it's maybe lends a little bit of more mystique to, you know, was that really that person? It's so funny though. I don't, I don't really understand how people know immediately, you know, I mean, especially for, not for the Sonic stuff because everyone knew I was voicing that, but other projects, you know, like people immediately online, you'd see Jason Griffith is credited as Adam Carrollson in this project. I'm like, how do you know that? Like, how do you know that's me and not just some guy named Adam that sounds like me, you know? So I don't know. I just like to play around with that. You know, everyone needs an alias. License and registration? I don't care. I want it on my desk in 10 minutes. If you don't have Stadler's numbers on it, I don't care. You know, I just uh, did a small part on Blue Bloods a couple weeks ago, which was awesome for the fact that it, it aired and it was my scene. And then when it cut to commercial break, one of the commercials that I do a voiceover for came on. And I was like, yes, score, score. <laughs> Wait, I have to know something. You're not one of those I don't wear a condom because they're uncomfortable guys, are you? No. What type of guy am I? One of those I don't wear a condom because that means you don't trust me, guys. No. Oh. I don't know how to answer that question because I'm not sure what it means. Look, I'm not a don't wear one because I've used one with every other girl I've been with guy. I don't wear one because they're too embarrassing to buy guy. I don't wear one because I'm allergic guy or even a don't wear a condom because I just don't feel like it guy. I'm aware of condom every time I have sex, no matter who I'm with, where I'm at, or what time of day it is, because that is the only way to be totally safe. Guy. When I worked on that condom commercial, I, there was one take where the director would have us, he's like, because we shot it in so many different, um, different uh, angles and variations and whatnot, and uh, <laughs> he said, I need you to go at her quickly. So there's one take where we both went at each other at the same time and I almost knocked her front teeth out. And we had to stop for like five minutes. And she, I'm like, are you okay? She was fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm, I'm working as uh, a character named Cal in Casters. And that's been amazing. Uh, it was one of those things where I went into it not knowing anybody and now th the cast, the crew, they're all my best friends. There's a danger in going into some of these things because you don't really know how good it's going to be. Sometimes, um, you know, you can be given a script, but you know that people don't know how to shoot it, or or the writing's not that good, or the acting is, you know, it's hard to act with people who, you know, just don't give you anything sometimes. But this was a case where the writing was awesome. The guys who were shooting it just knew everything, how to do it, set up, boom, done. Let's, you know rolling and it looks like it should be on television and and the uh, and the fellow actors you know the people that i'm acting with are just like amaze me you know i i'm amazed they're not on like national network you know uh, television shows right now you get new listeners word of mouth mostly uh we hit message boards ads on facebook link ourselves up to podcasts that we listen to and you have a new show every week try to i i had a friend who uh introduced me to aaron gould who is the creator and writer of casters um i didn't know aaron at the time and i met him and i thought to myself wow this guy is a whirlwind of talent and wit it was a lunch we had and every four seconds was a new joke and i was like i'm blown away by this guy so he gave me the script the first script of Casters, which was Bring It Up. And I read it and I said, this is a television show. This actually could be on TV right now. And was really impressed and really excited to work on it. And then months went by where nobody was able to get their schedule together. And finally, we um, we started filming a year ago. Actually, a year and a month ago, I think, was the first time we, we shot. So, you know, I just uh, basically met the guy and he said, you know, you're this character. Minus the porn addiction. <laughs> I 
started going to the websites again a lot and she found out and she left me Cal is addicted to working he's he's addicted to uh, making his show work um, I don't want to say too much because it, there, there are a lot of questions I think the audience needs to ask themselves but one question I will ask is is Cal even looking at porn I think he could be looking at presidential websites maybe he's addicted to the presidents um, you know recipes maybe he's looking at recipes online I wanted to play some centipede but it wouldn't let me now how centipede is gonna lead me down the path of depravity you tell me Cal did get to play his damn centipede and Zaxxon and Galaga <laughs> fair enough as long as we're clear there will be an apology centipede no I'd just like to say to everyone, I'm not Jason Anthony Griffith. That's another actor. He lives in LA. Jason Adam Griffith. Weird, right? And I think he, and I, I swear, man, I, I think he was born November 26th, 1980. I was born November 29th, 1980. How coincidental is that? There are two actors, Jason A. Griffith, born three days apart, same year, both acting. I mean, like, is that, is he, is the world gonna come to an end if I meet him? <laughs> I think it's like Highlander, only one can live. 